Hey there guys, we're taking a look at Dead Rising 3 running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5500U. Now you're looking at the game currently running right now with the lowest in-game graphics settings and the graphics presets actually also adjust the resolution with it. So this is actually the game running at 720p. And again, that is what the lowest graphics preset sets things to. So I decided to leave it alone and the game itself has a 30 FPS cap due to the fact that the port for it wasn't exactly the greatest in terms of the amount of effort that was put in. You can actually modify the game files the developers themselves even said that you can do that to unlock the FPS cap, but they can't guarantee that it'll work properly. And a lot of the times in games like this, they usually tie something to the FPS. So unlocking it can actually end up giving you problems. If you've ever played the original Dark Souls on PC when it first released, you'll understand that uncapping the FPS on that can really mess with the physics of the game and can really actually make it impossible to play. The first time I actually ever played Dark Souls on PC, I actually immediately modded it to unlock the FPS and I could not even defeat the first boss because the plunging attack would not work properly because the roll physics was broken. I would try to essentially just jump down to attack the enemy, but it would not really register me dropping in the right location. So I would always end up missing that first drop. And that first drop does a crap load of damage to the boss. So I just thought that the game itself was broken, but it turns out it was the actual physics being broken due to the fact that it had the altered FPS. And in this case, I pretty much just left it alone at the 30 FPS cap. And you can see here that at the stock 15 watt TDP, we are actually able to hit that FPS pretty consistently. But if you pay attention to those 1% lows and those frame times, it's not exactly the prettiest experience in terms of that. We're definitely seeing some pretty major fluctuations here in the sense that the 1% lows are dropping down into the teens, which is not exactly the most ideal situation. It's certainly not unplayable, but this definitely reminds me of playing games on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 more than anything else, where 30 FPS was very common, but a lot of the times heavier games would really struggle to even keep an FPS that was in the 20s a lot of the time. If you ever played Fallout 3 on the PlayStation 3, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So in general, it's not the most ideal situation like this. You could certainly get away with it if you're on a system that is hard capped at 15 watts, but I would recommend actually raising the TDP up to 25 watts because as you'll see here, the FPS is raised pretty significantly in terms of the 1% lows and now they're practically completely rock solid locked at 30. Again, you can uncap the FPS if you really want to, but I just would not go through the effort of it because of the fact that one, it already runs really smooth like this at 30 FPS because it's at least consistent and two, because who knows what kind of effect it's going to have on things like physics. I think you're probably better off just leaving it be and playing the game like this. And at this point, it runs really, really well. And if you actually pay attention to the GPU, it's actually not even being fully loaded at this point. You could realistically actually raise the graphics at this point, at least up to 900 P and you're more than likely going to actually have a decent time. So if you're stuck at 15 watts, then by all means, go with the lowest graphics settings and just understand that it's not gonna, going to be the greatest experience. But outside of that, if you could just raise the TDP up to 25 watts, you're already gonna get a massive, massive gain. And if you're gonna play at the lowest graphics settings, you're gonna get rock solid performance and the system's gonna run really, really cool and quiet. I mean, we're, we're pretty much just in the mid seventies for the temperature, that's more than adequate. And the system itself actually actually isn't even making that much noise. But if you do want to get a little bit more quality out of this, 900p is always an option, more than likely by just going up to the medium graphics settings, because that is what the medium graphics settings also does. It does adjust it to 900p. If you go with that, you're probably still going to be in a very decent spot, but this was already playable enough for me. And I pretty much just ended up sitting here and playing like this and had a really rock solid time. I've personally really never played that many Dead Rising games. I think I only played the first one, but Dead Rising 2 is really the one that people associate with kind of just cementing what the franchise is. And of course, Dead Rising 3 kind of just went in a direction that I think was pretty controversial for fans. But I think that overall, it was an enjoyable game, at least from the little that I actually played. But anyways, I hope you found this look at Dead Rising 3 running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5500U to be useful or interesting. If you did, be sure to subscribe and I will catch you in the next one.